days into the month of June 2020, 2021, a few minutes past 10. Thank you so much for creating time for us. This is News Check. Today a lot has been happening already this particular morning. The Education Cabinet Secretary, Professor George Magoha, has just launched the Form 1 selection exercise at the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. A lot coming forth from that particular uh, you know, forum. And we will be discussing that plus much more that touches on the education sector in this particular program today. So thank you once again for creating time for us. My name is Safin Aching Ouma, and our sign language interpreter for this morning is Susan Thugu. Of course, in studio, I will be engaging a panel that contains two education experts who will be helping me unpack some of the issues that have shaped this particular process, a process that was marred with a lot of challenges. We remember the lockdown that was there in the country that saw schools being closed for about eight months uh, where, when learners could not go to school for physical learning. And of course, at a time when others were preparing for the national examinations, so a lot of anxiety gripped the nation as candidates were preparing for the examinations with a lot of uncertainty as to when they will first resume back to school for learning and of course when they are going to be sitting for these particular national examinations. But we saw the Ministry of Education together with other players, including those from the Ministry of Health, put in measures and protocols that saw learners resume their learning first uh, with the candidates and uh, the, those who were transitioning for the CBC program and of course later on uh, schools were reopened fully for all learners to go back to school for physical learning. So amidst those challenges, uh, just the other day we saw candidates who sat for uh, the 2020 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education Examinations and KCSE as well post very good results amid those challenges and the uncertainties that they went through before they sat for those exams. And today that Form 1 selection exercise was launched to kickstart their journey into joining secondary school. So we'll be discussing that plus much more in this particular broadcast. Please engage us on social media at Safin underscore Ching and also on our official social media handle at KBC Channel 1. We'll be sampling your questions and your views in the course of this particular program. Allow me to introduce my panel for the show this particular morning. It's two gentlemen who have been in this particular sector for quite a while and they have a vast of experience to just discuss with us on some of the issues that should shape this process and how do we recover uh, in the education sector during this COVID-19 pandemic. Pandemic. I'm talking about uh, sitting at the center there. We have major retired Peter Mwithi. He is a governance and policy expert, but of course today also is wearing the heart of an educationist. He has a background in education as a trained uh, teacher. Of course, we also have uh, Jacob Kiyoko. Jacob Kiyoko is an educationist as well, and also he understands uh, the twists and turns of running a school, and a private school for that matter, private schools that were really affected by this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for creating time for us, and we'll be learning a lot from your experience and also just help us understand how the best way forward in the education sector as we move on. I'd just like us to start from what actually was launched this particular morning uh, by the Ministry of Education, the Form 1 selection exercise officially kicking off. Candidates will be knowing their fate, which schools they, they will be attending for their secondary school examination. I just want to understand very quickly um, from, you know, a general perspective from both of you, um, you know, how this journey has taken shape and even how candidates post a very ex uh, excellent i would call it that results amidst the challenges they were facing what what are you getting what are you reading what are you learning from this whole process i'll start with you peter i think madam let me say my thanks to the station kbc this is not my first time to be here and i'm very grateful especially now that you have given me a chance to come and talk on uh, the issue which is very pertinent to our country, the release of the results for uh, Form 1. Uh, our students who are going for transition in secondary schools, August 2nd, I think. And I should say one thing, madam, that uh, our teachers out there, although we had these pandemic issues and many, many issues, they really worked hard. Mm -hmm. I, I used to go to Kajiado uh, schools where I reside, and I used to see teachers working very, very hard. And one of the things that uh, we must appreciate is our teachers out there in schools. Mm -hmm. They have done a fantastic job, and that has resulted to the posting of good results mm -hmm. for the last uh, KCP 
right. candidates. All right. Jacob, it was an, a bit uncertain how this process was going to take shape considering uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, Lana stayed away from school for eight months. But here we are, our, 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 our children are actually going for, to form one. W what can you say about how this journey has also taken shape? First and foremost, I thank you for hosting me. Um, it has been a very tough time for everybody, Ch school children, parents, and all stakeholders in the Ministry of Education, starting with the topmost office. But the problem is not insurmountable. It has been surmounted through a lot of hard work and dedication from all sectors. In the case of the pupils, a lot had to be done even during the closure. Due to COVID-19, we had to go through all intrications with a parent, with a child, and the teachers especially, and we had to to encourage, make use of um, internet learning, make use of what is available at home and at school, and um, also um, holding examinations as we, the pupils learned, we would hold examinations based on the normal curriculum so that they were kept active all through. Mm -hmm. They were encouraged. And the results are what we see today, that um, that encouragement and that dedication from parents and pupils and teachers has yielded good results. Mm -hmm. We are now proud that our uh, well, Form 1 selection is ongoing. It's going to be, you know, pulled through and that is going to be of immense benefit to this nation and it's proof that where there is will there is a way where there is will there is a way already words of wisdom coming <laughs> but thank you so much all right so um this particular time um according to the cs this whole process is going to be done electronically not manually as it used to be back in the day which came with a lot of challenges peter i don't know what you think about how this is going to change the narrative and even the level of transparency that uh, this process usually uh, you know is 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 accorded how how is it going to change the whole process using the the, the online platform to do this madam let me bring in my experience because i've been in charge of uh, selection of form one yeah. representing department of defense in eastern province for a very long time during that time we used to do it manually we used to meet uh, in the provincial headquarters. By then, the establishment of administration was provincial. So the PED would open the ceremony, and then we would sit there in groups trying to bring in. It was, it was very exhaustive. It was very, very, very physical, and uh, it was not fair. I can assure you that there was a lot of corruption. The needy, the needy who merited to go to some schools never went there. But I think this one uh, by the Professor Magoa, our years of education has said that it was done by computerization mm -hmm. and one thing I would appreciate is that uh, he, s he did say that it is going to be very credible very fair and is going to be very equity one thing I noted about his speech is that he, he took uh, a direct from our head of state president uh, Uru Kenyatta who said that uh, the, 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 the candidates from the slum urban areas must be considered to our national schools. And that was done. Previously, our candidates from slum areas were, were neglected a lot. They, were, they merited to go to some national schools, some good performing schools, even private schools, but because of the poverty level in our slums, they were not able. But this time, we must appreciate the directive which was carried by the Minister of Education. And uh, he said there is equity. And one thing also heard from his speech is that there were some candidates from uh, uh, slum areas who are taken to day schools in far far areas of our country and that this time did not take place. Mm. He made sure that, that the students who come from poverty-stricken areas in slums, in the urban areas, were taken to schools near them just to enable them 
push up with the education. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about uh, this uh, learners who come from vulnerable backgrounds a little bit later in this conversation. But I also want to get your view, uh, Jacob, on this particular matter, the transparency and even the, 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 the time it takes for this whole process to be completed. What do you think, um, you know, is going to change if we embrace the use of technology in this particular process? Uh, and probably are there challenges you've seen with the uh, previous, uh, you know, way of doing it that probably you'd like to, to highlight as well? The issue is, no matter what system we use, the key thing is the mental change. That is what is critical, and that is what the CS is here emphasizing, whether manual or electronic. Kenyan mindset is what is most critical. And with the pronouncements from the head of state, from all stakeholders, that we want to transit 100% and at the same time we want transparency. That alone is a lesson to everybody. Everybody is here being told we must be transparent, we must be transparent, we must be transparent. And from that as the base, then we can advance electronically into doing what we say we will do. Mm. So the key thing here is the emphasis to every Kenyan that we must change from not only not only the manual way of selecting from one pupils but also the attitude of doing it pupils from slum areas as well as pupils from um, disadvantaged areas not necessarily at Mukuru Kwanjenga but also like uh, a pupil from Mandera I have heard some in my school. Mm -hmm. They are dis disadvantaged to the extreme in that they hardly speak English. And if they do, it is broken English. But on being taken on board and on being led, just like other pupils are, they perform well ultimately. So the key thing here is uh, the emphasis that we need to have a corruption-free from one selection process, mm -hmm. whether manual or electronic, and this time the electronic selection is easier, it's faster, and it can, you know, you can check it. So the key thing here is that. Um, is it going to address those issues you're raising, like, uh, for example, what even uh, Peter was mentioning, uh, some disadvantaged learners are being locked out of these opportunities based on the fact that probably they do not have a voice on the negotiating table. Is, is this new process going to address some of these issues? I think it is going to address some of the issues because it will now be on a broad base. This is what everybody has called. What does the computer say? A pupil from this area uh, should be accorded and also the, the equitable distribution of resources because unless we have pupils from all fronts in the country and this is now easily available from a computer lay, lay, layout it is easier for decision makers to see in clear focus yeah and the results when posted all Kenyans will now see in clear focus that um, there is fairness here Unlike in the past, where it was all darkness, in which um, I and other people, other Kenyans, could manipulate mm, and decide and, and decide this one yeah. should go where it should not go. As a result, we have a problem. I had the CS categorically, and he was really firm on this, saying he's going to switch off <laughs> his phone. <laughs> Because I believe probably it has been a challenge in the past, a few people trying to make calls and trying to take shortcuts here and there. But he was very categorical. He's going to even switch off his phone if he has to, so that this process is as free and transparent as possible. But why do you think there is such a thirst for going to these prestigious schools? What could be uh, the motivating factor, Peter, that every parent wants their kid to land in this national school, in this prestigious school? What could be leading to that? Yeah. I, I think let me make a reference from the CS speech. He really did say there is a mistake and he really directed the directors of education to talk to the teachers outside the field in the sense that uh, their teachers do not uh, give 
the candidates a good education in terms of selection of the form ones. Mm. He did give some uh, examples of schools like uh, Nakuru, Alliance, where he said that during the registration of form one, the children do not have the, the idea of how to choose the schools. Some, some children chose for instance, a uh, school like, um, like Moifosis Academy, Mo a whole school chooses that, sc that, mm. that, 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 that school. It's not even practical. So it's, it's not, not practical. So he really, he, really, he, really, he really insisted for the teachers to go back during the registration. In fact, the registration is going on. It's going to be closed on 30th, 30th in Ju July. So he did say that the candidates must be given enough education on the choice of selection of form one mm. not one school to choose a whole class choosing one school it gives a big problem to those ones who are going to decide on what to to fix them in various mm. schools but everybody that's a challenge everybody wants to go to this and, 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 good and, schools and this, one, and one you thing know? madam Cheng, is that uh, <laughs> Uh, the Kenyan way. We have a, we want to be very prestigious that my child is in Alliance, my child is in Pangani. In fact, he did mention Pangani is one of those schools that uh, they were, they, they, everybody wanted to go there. Mm. But it's human tendency that everyone, everyone wants the best. Mm. Yeah. How do we address this task, <laughs> this hunger, How, so that we have sort of um, an easy way of going around it, Jacob, so that everybody is not looking at that one school, that boys' school, that national school, Everyone wants to go there, regardless of even your academic, uh, you know, ability. Well, the issue here is um, to want to be seen to be there. Now, that hunger, I think, was inherited from the colonial government because only a few schools were developed up to some level. Mm -hmm. And those who have the best marks would be, um, uh, will go into those institutions. So after independence, I think a lot of emphasis was laid on those particular institutions. And as a result, I'm a Kenyan, I pay taxes, why not my child? And everybody says, I want to go to the best. Now, the solution here is, first, when they, uh, when they book their exams, like what my colleague here says is ongoing, first, the teacher, the headmaster, should guide the pew pew. This is your history of performance. Yeah. I, I like where you're going because it has to start somewhere. Yes. Academic ability. Well, that's right. What are you capable of? Yes. Yeah. So everybody knows his or her ability. And these are your results. Now, if you want to go to the best, you may not merit to go into that school. And the parent should also be called along. This is the ability of your child. Now, there are no exaggerations in it because from class one up to today, this is the performance of your child. It is not possible that a miracle will be done in the examination room so that your child gets the best in the but, country. But how do you explain this to a parent, though, without them uh, accusing you of branding no, no. <laughs> their no, child? It's because every, we know that. every parent wants their child to have that high performance that if it is an A, if it is they all have to hope until the very last minute. You cannot tell a parent that this is how your child has been performing so this is what I advise. They cannot go beyond this. How do you explain this no, in no. a language we that will not we do. be offensive? We do. we do. Like yesterday I was on that. Okay. And okay. I explained it to parents. Not one, not two. That this is the truth. Mm -hmm. When we are all of, of different abilities that I am not a first class mathematician does not mean that I will not be a first class lawyer. Mm -hmm. So you do not necessarily have to go to Alliance and those big name schools in order to become a doctor. In order to, and I gave my own example. I did go to those big schools, but I'm here doing what I do and that very effectively. So the issue here is let us see reality for what it is. And in a school, say a class of 50, if everybody is going to fill in to go to Alliance, and we know the chances, the vacancies available in those national schools, then you actually put your school into disadvantage. Because maybe only one, at most two, 
may be admitted there because of everybody Out wants... Out of a class mm. of 50. Yes. And it's replicated in the 47 counties. Yes. Everyone wants to go to that particular school. True. Yeah. So the issue here is to explain it politely and openly to the mm. child and to the parent. This is reality. Let us face reality for what it is. And if you all want to go to Alliance, then you block your chances of going to uh, other good schools. But since everybody wants to go to Alliance, and other people may select to go to other schools, although you may pass well, you may not go to Alliance because of the competition, and you block your own chance of going in, I mean, to a good school yeah, yeah. because of the, you know, everybody is flocked in there. All right. But right. the solution, uh -huh. the solution, the ultimate solution is to, to upgrade, not by, not on paper, but on the ground, to upgrade as many schools as is possible. The facilities that we have in, say, Alliance and other schools can be replicated elsewhere. Mm. All teachers are Kenyan teachers. They all go to the same TSCs. So the teachers in Alliance are no better than the teachers in other schools. So what counts here okay. is one, the name, the prestige, and two, the facilities. So that and is what attracts many learners. That is I will, I will come back to you, Jacob, but let me just give Peter a chance. He's talking about improving um, the infrastructure in other schools uh, so that at least they could be at par. All schools will be treated almost equally. And also talking about checking the history, the academic history of this particular learner so that it can inform um, you know, their Form 1 selection. That's a very key point there that is he's sharing. I don't know whether you have something to add I, as, as sort of a way that can help us work this out this I, this hunger this passion this thirst of wanting to be in a prestigious school I which think, is not bad i think maybe to add on what uh, my colleague jacob has said there is, should be an education awareness on the selection I, maybe he has been in the class i've been out of the classroom for a long time mm. but when i was in the classroom during that time i'm talking of 1970s when wow. i trained as a p1 teacher the parents and the children and the career master in that school during the selection of those schools they were all put together and they were told what was happening perhaps uh, madam Cheng, you can allow me to read some statistics mm -hmm. because the shortage of this school as my colleague has said is the one which prompt the parents and the students to blog in in some schools who perform very well and the minister of education has um, has had a chance of uh, uh, choosing schools on three on three domains one is uh, pa performance av availability of vacancies in those schools and choices that uh, the children want to do mm -hmm. and let me try to highlight some statistics here on uh, the availability of those schools because those are the determinant factors on the selection of Form 1s and that is where we had a problem of one school because it has excelled in Form 4 exams, then everybody, all the parents want their children to go there, of course on prestige issues. There are 103 national schools in our country. Mm -hmm. That is very short of fall of, we had a candidates, number of candidates, I think last year was about 1.18 million yeah, candidates. And you can see now, we have 103 national schools, 531 extra county schools, 1,031 county schools, 7,325 sub-county, and 1,164 private high schools. Now, previous Form 1 selection, the national schools had declared 29,000 places, 29,712. Extra county, those schools had declared about 123, 3,099. And the county had the biggest number, 142,358. Mm -hmm. And then sub-county, it was 600. 665590 position now you can see the number of uh, the number of candidates that is 1.18 and the number of the vacancies mm. so there's a struggle there's a struggle so i think what you should need and i think uh, the, the the budget the, the minister for for treasury has already budgeted a lot of finance funding for the minister of education i don't know how much jacob do you remember i don't remember but it's quite a huge amount of money mm. to subsidize what is there already there but we should need to have better schools. If we talk about Pangani, 
which are those schools which are high level schools like Pangani, Kenya High, Moi Nairobi Girls, then we should have governors try to make resources to have the same schools in 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 the in, in, mm -hmm. in our so, so you're proposing that yeah. the county government should also take up responsibility, responsibility. to improve mm -hmm. the schools within their jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know whether um, you know you've just had the numbers yeah. <laughs> and uh, they are bringing out um, you know how there's a, a serious shortage of um, you know national schools. Uh, he's saying only 103 nationally. These are the national schools we have I mean amidst a very huge number of uh, candidates who sit for examinations each and every particular year how then should we go around this particular suggestion we are saying that every school should actually be improved so that learners will not only want to look at that high national school that is maybe located in several distance uh, 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 several kilometers away from where they live how d how do we practically go about it should parents also take up a role should you know the local administration take up a role what should be done the solution is only one to improve the national economy there are no two ways about it on improving the national economy then more funds will be allocated to improve the existing schools and build new ones i repeat all teachers posted in all those schools are trained in our local institutions teacher service ttcs as well as the local universities now when one is posted to one of those high profile national schools he does not make mean that he is better than the teacher who is posted into another school which is not so sub, um, uh, prestigious so the issue here is improving the facilities available in the so-called lower prestigious less prestigious secondary schools and they are not always about that so the allocation um, the, the the funds allocated by the the ministry to the min, ministry of education sorry the allocation made to the ministry of education could be substantial but it's not enough because the number of pupils who need to go to form one as per the statist statistics uh, my colleague has given. Now, no matter how hard we struggle, even if every class eight pupil scored as or through, mm. that will not change the number of pupils to be admitted into the best School. secondary schools. Mm. They can only accommodate the number that they can, no regardless of how, yes. how the, no performance matter, yeah, or the performance yeah. is. So, so the issue here think. is yeah. the issue here is to improve the allocation of funds to the Minister of Education, and that can only happen if the national economy improves. Okay, well said. Because everyone wants to go to these schools, why should why should someone study so hard to go to a school where they are studying under trees? It's reality that in some areas in this in this country, learners are still studying under trees. True. Shortage of classrooms, True. shortage of teachers. True. They have to walk long distances to get to school. Yeah. So each and every child wants that that beautiful dream for themselves. They want to go to the city, to the urban centers, to 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 have a conducive working environment. Same to teachers. Even teachers want to go to these yeah. prestigious schools for better working environments, better yeah. terms, better True. pay. True. So if we do not rethink our strategy in improving the education sector, then we are going to face this problem even in the coming years. I want us to talk about a very important move that the government took up recently to ensure that every learner actually transitions to secondary school. Earlier, it was depending on how much, uh, w what marks you have, but we have the 100% transition program that the government saw it fit to allow learners to all each and every person, regardless of what you got, you have a chance in secondary school. A step in the right direction? Yes, no, maybe? That's, that's what I want you to comment on. That is a very good initiative that the government came up with. But let me take you back to 
I give you my. I, I always like giving my formal e example. Mm -hmm. I am a, I'm, I'm an executive member of the board of a very local school in uh, Tonya in Zarakanidhi County. Mm -hmm. When we went there just two years ago, the school was so down. It did not have the infrastructure that what we wanted for our children. What we did with our chairman is to and uh, to, 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 to initiate behavioral change of the parents around that locality. We have, a, we have a, a very negative tendency of our parents that everything, it is the government. Without them knowing that uh, the government is you and me. You understand? Mm -hmm. So what we did, we called all the parents for all classes and we told them what is being given by the CDF. Uh, by the way, I was reading in our local dailies, there was a, a member of parliament who is crying. Up today, some of the funds of a CDF, which actually go to the schools, building infrastructure, has not been released by the Treasury. Mm -hmm. I hope they are going to do that because we had the Minister for Treasury uh, saying that we must, the, the, the funds must be given to the to the counties but however the problem is we need the parents and our kenyan citizens to have what we call behavioral change that anything must not be coming from the government because the government is like a father who sometimes cannot be able to satisfy all his children so what we did is uh, we did some arambis just under the ground because they were not allowed and then we built up some classes you understand mm -hmm. many many of our locals there wanted to take school their children to Meru school kaga girls chogoria but uh, when we brought in good infrastructure and the good administration of the school the children went and i can tell you for last year's performance in that school, we had the four going to university, mm -hmm. and yet we took very minimal, minimal, minimal marks, 200, 300, just below to ensure that our children learn. But with good facilities, with good administration of those schools, with the behavioral change of the parents around that school, they'll contribute to the mm -hmm. school, and then everything will be okay. So Rather than mm -hmm. depending on the, the little bigger funds from the government. So sometimes the local community has to, to chip in. push mm. themselves a little harder yeah. for, for, for that to happen. But still going back to my question, I'll, I'll come back to you on it later. Jacob, just to respond to my earlier question on the 100% transition program um, you know it, it actually allowed learners to have a chance to transition to secondary school but did we invest in ensuring that the schools were ready for them when they come that population unfortunately no we did not invest enough and unfortunately it is not by design it is by the situation the economic situation of the country the need is there the zeal to get it done is there but the money is not there that is where the problem is and that is why i'm here emphasizing that the only solution to get that 100 percent transition done and done right is to improve the infrastructure in those schools and that cannot happen without improving the national economy. And that is part of what I will be addressing uh, Kenyans on in this show, because I have a way of doing that. That's why I'm so emphatic. Mm -hmm. Because until and unless we raise the funds national, nationally, no matter how good intentions we may have for Kenyans, without the means to get that done, well, it will be more viable than practical. Mm -hmm. True. Peter, I don't know w what you can add on that because I'm actually always asking myself why even after the government introduced their 100% transition program, they still sort of like had to police the parents to, to, to ensure that every child is in class. You, you had even the CS becoming very firm that local chiefs and, and, and even the local leaders, local administration, not to really go door, door to door to ensure that every child is in school. Why should we go that direction? I thought parents really want their kids to go to school. It's only like some of them are, are not privileged to be able to afford. What, what could be happening? I think the problem here, I look it in this direction. One, as you have said, and I'll also give an example from where I come from. The local administration, right from Uyumze Wakijiji, like where I come from, I saw very many 
children not going to school. I stopped them on the way and asked, Kwa nini wewe ujenda shule? And they said, there is no money. But to me, it is the inefficiency of the local administration. You remember sometimes our CS was arguing the local administrators to go house to house to ensure that the children go to school so that we can achieve the 100% transition rate. But, but should it get to that point? It though? should not That's get to question. that point. But I Shouldn't it, it be voluntary from the parents level to know that this child actually deserves and needs to go to school? Yeah. Must, must somebody knock at your door to sort of coerce you to take your son or daughter to school. That's, that's there are so many understand. reasons, uh, yeah. madam. There are so many reasons why our parents don't care about the education. One, some of them do not appreciate the value of education. That is one. Second, as my colleague has said, Mr. Jacob, is the economy. Sometimes they don't have, even when, when you, you find a, a parent who does not have any money to put the food on the table, how do you think he's going to take the child? Thank, thank to our constitution of 2010, which allows everybody to go to school, and then the, the, the ministry brought about the day schools. You remember the day schools? Mm -hmm. The day schools have really helped people, because what the, 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 the parents mostly have to, to give in is just lunch program. And some, uh, some ed teachers have brought up the innovative way if the parent do not have money if he's skilled in um, let's say in carpentry he can do the work and that service is translated to school fees, school fees or the, the the lunch program financing but the problem is the awareness some some parents do not have the the sense of understanding the value of education and our our local administrators right from the village do not have the, 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 the time to talk to our parents in the barazas, in the phone. Our politicians also are failing us. Our politicians are failing us because whenever they come there, it is politics from Monday to Friday. When they come to schools, uh, maybe Arambes to build some school, to classrooms or whatever uh, assistance they are asked by the head teachers to come and give. Uh, believe me or not, 90% of their speech is, does not dwell on the education. Mm -hmm. It deals on the politics and politics and politics. So we need to do a lot in trying to educate our children, our parents, the value of education, mm -hmm. especially the media. You people right. in the media, mm -hmm. you should centralize people, you should centralize everybody. It is, not, uh, it is not a perception that you must believe that everybody who went to school to a certain level will appreciate. We have economic problems that will dash our parents from appreciating the value of education. Mm -hmm. Some parents don't appreciate the value of education. Mm -hmm. Others also use their children to earn a living. Um, maybe the son or the daughter is doing something to bring income to the family. So if you tell me to take this child to school, how are you going to eat at the end of the day? So these are factors that also needs to be looked at before we make certain decisions. But gentlemen, either way, we've begun the journey. We've, we've already, you know, uh, started this and the 100% transition program is actually, I think this should be the third cohort. How do we make it work? Because it has to, it's a good initiative. We, we, are, we understand the challenges that, uh, you know, teacher-learner uh, ratio, which was a crisis before the 100% transition. It is even a bigger crisis right now that every learner is going to school. The classrooms, the, the, the number of learners who can be accommodated in these classrooms, it was a problem before. Now it has even, uh, you know, tripled. How do we make it work? Because it has to, Jacob. Well, the only solution, I repeat, is growth of the national economy. And that is what I am now going to dwell on because I have a solution mm -hmm. to that problem. Mm -hmm. um, strictly speaking, I'm not a teacher. I am a marketer by profession. Mm -hmm. And several years ago, I developed and patented a marketing innovation which enables every individual to earn a living through... Um, a, a scheme which I call the Dugui Innovation. Now, you and I know that whereas business is profit driven, society is value driven. And there is a gap between society and business in that particular description. Mm -hmm. This is the gap of economic dichotomy. Mm -hmm. Now, the innovation is about the bridging of that gap of economic dichotomy between society and business. Mm -hmm. So that whatever item you purchase from the shop, you are afforded a retainer incentive 
and instead of uh, you are redeeming your retainer incentive you are issued with a share certificate and cumulatively those in incentives are invested in job creating business corporations now at the end of the trading period for those business corporations every shareholder is paid dividends this is empowerment of the masses at national level the business corporations which are so created will go a long way in raising investment capital from our local resources in the domestic economy. All through up to this hour, all national governments of the world emphasize on development of infrastructure at the complete exclusion of investment capital. Now, in, in development of infrastructure is not total development of the national economy because all governments develop the infrastructure and hope enough investors are going to invest so as to grow the economy as a whole. Mm -hmm. It should be now, the other way around, that's what you're saying? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Both are very important. All right. The infrastructure is very important. But how then do we get people to invest in that infrastructure? And this is what I'm here saying. We empower the masses from the grassroots so that you are now empowered and you can now invest in that instead of waiting for foreigners to come and invest in our economy we start investing in our own economy and that is how we grow mm -hmm. now the government is going to get a lot of revenue which can can then be uh, allocated to all the departments the Ministry of Education included so the key issue here is to raise investment capital from our own local resources mm -hmm. instead of waiting for foreigners to come and invest mm -hmm. we have already the infrastructure in place for example now unless foreigners come and invest in that infrastructure we just fold our hands on our chests and wait if they don't come the infrastructure becomes a monument now instead of over depending on foreigners to come and invest this innovation enables every single living Kenyan because whoever eats whoever lives eats and whoever eats will be afforded mm -hmm. this a retainer incentive. All right, all right. I, I, I feel like I have a lot of questions concerning yes, this, yes. this particular innovation, but I risk going into another you yes. know, conversation altogether, making, which I don't want to do. Yeah. So allow me to, to leave it at that. But what I'm getting, it's actually a proposal to, um, for economic empowerment to ensure that every Kenyan is able to you know, sustain themselves and afford yep. what they need to afford, which, yep. which is a good proposal. Thank you for bringing it on the table. I just want to also understand, Peter, from, from your perspective, how, how do we cushion um, you know, parents from vulnerable uh, uh, environments, vulnerable backgrounds, so that that economic aspect is no longer an issue that should, be, should dictate whether they should allow their children to go to school or not? Is there something that can be done also to, 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 to improve their livelihoods from your perspective, as Jacob has also shared with us his, his proposal? I do agree with you. We have uh, the, 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 the economy and the education, they are correlated. Yeah. Because if the parents do not have the capacity, economical capacity, to be able to satisfy their needs, then how would they venture into uh, taking their children to school? Especially now that Form 1 is supposed to be reporting, COVID has yeah. happened, you should hear the and, conversations and, and, and let us, the parents are And let us having. thank uh, the 2010 Constitution, which brought about the devolution, so that the funds were to move from the up to the counties. But my, my, my observation is that uh, it's just the will of the people. It, it is not so much on the funds. It's not, I, I, it's not so much on the funds. Because let me take you back to the subject that we, we are very sick of as a country, corruption. Mm -hmm. The money is taken to the counties. Instead of the county bosses investing in education, they do other things. Let, let us imagine about the ESCC 
which last time they told us they have secured the corrupted money, if I may use that language, to billions. What if these billions are invested in our education programs? What will happen? Mm -hmm. the, the money is there. I don't know where it is going to be taken later alone for the projects of the of other I don't know I don't know whether it's going to bring issues of corruption I think it's the the will and I'll give you an example in the military where I've served for 33 good years in charge of education mm. in every in every military uh, in every military base or unit we have a secondary school we have a primary school we have a nursery school for our children because the parents there are always outside the barracks maybe they're in moyale doing other security issues for our country but uh, the welfare of our children those who are serving we are given some money and this money is is translated to 100 percent there's no corruption there i can tell you for sure mm -hmm. so that's why i want to base my argument that it is the will of the people as much as the economy is a factor there it is the will of the people if we have a, a, a good attitude of ensuring that our resources are going to the management of the facilities in our schools we shall do it we, we shall be better off but the corruption issue the will of the people, that is what we, and of course what Jacob has said, of our independence of our donor mm. stakeholders who are coming outside. How, do, they how, would, how do we generate our income yeah, from within? We should be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. We should uh, educate our, our, our parents that uh, this is our baby and everybody should have integrity. And then whatever resources we have, we must put it to the right for our children. And All that right. is the way forward. All right. Gentlemen, I'm coming back uh, to you. We, we're just about to take a very short break, but there is still more that we want to discuss here concerning even how COVID affected the education sector and how do we recover? How do we pick up the pieces? How do we, you know, borrow the lessons? But, you know, just to take you through some numbers I have here, uh, you remember that last year more than one million candidates sat for the KCP examinations and out of that, 8,091 scored more than 400 marks. Another 243, 3,020 got between 301 and 400 marks. We had some 586, 886 candidates who scored between 201 and 300 marks, while 262, uh, 307 candidates had between 101 and 200 marks. And we had only 1,173 pupils who had 100 marks and below. The good news about this is that each and every one of them is going to get an opportunity to go to secondary school. Whether they are going to take advantage of that opportunity or not, that is what we were even discussing with my guests in studio. Earlier. We'll pick it up after this particular break. Do stay with us. This is News Check.